I think some of those off cycle earnings, um, you know, are coming in a little bit weaker uh, this week. But when you look at the second quarter earnings season collectively, it's been a quite a solid earnings season. I mean, companies were able to put up double digit earnings growth, beating expectations. I mean, margins were able to deliver that. Most most of the beat came from margin expansion. Now, are we at peak margin? Still remains to be seen. Um, but I don't think that margins are going to contract or uh, quickly. Um, we do have you know market margin strength that will likely continue in areas like like tech that will be able to uphold uh, this market. But it is something bear watching as inflation comes off. You know, as company potentially loses price and power, it is something that we are closely watching. But it doesn't feel like we're we're falling off of a cliff just yet doesn't look as though we're falling off the cliff uh, just yet so you're in the soft landing camp uh, Nadia and uh, the market admittedly really seems to be uh, wrestling with soft landing narrative versus uh, the recession uh, risk perhaps it will be somewhere in mm -hmm. between and Goldilocks is a big is, 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 is what we all hope for uh, you've got a 5,900 target on uh, the S&P at the end of the year. Given the balance of risks, given the slower growth environment, given the lower rates regime as well, how do we get there? I think you get there from the one, your earnings growth is going to drive it. I mean, we're looking for 11% um, or more earnings growth for this year. I think you also get there from tech continuing to hold in there. We've seen some volatility of tech in recently, but we do think that tech will regain its le uh, leadership uh, into year end. And then also, I mean, I think the nice thing that you saw in the second quarter was you finally saw that broadening out of earnings growth. Remember, much of the earnings growth over the last year has been driven by the Magnificent Seven. You're finally seeing those 493 grow um, for the first time in several quarters. And so you're seeing a broadening out of performance. We think that that will continue to happen, but we don't think that it will be the expense of the, the leaders that we've had so far this year. Um, yes, there will be volatility. Yes, there will be bouts of pullback, but we think that ultimately all of these elements will come together to help push the market towards 5,900. But tomorrow will be important, as we know. Payroll is going to be important, and I think that the market will want to see things come in line. Not too hot, not too cold. Absolutely. And uh, energy uh, has been something off a barometer of uh, the global uh, weakness. Uh, how are you approaching that particular sector, Nadia, uh, which has been this week one of the worst performing S&P sectors? Do we stay invested or lighten up? Oh, so we are neutral on energy, but I think you have to be selective within <clears throat> energy. You're seeing some weakness in oil prices. I mean, our commodities team do think that oil prices will start to move back up higher. I mean, we know that OPEC Plus has pushed out um, the potential of adding back barrels um, to the market in October. And so in a couple of months, we'll know more about that. We also hit in sort of the shoulder season um, for energy. So that something's bear watching. So I think you want to focus on those more diversified energy companies and also also, some of these energy companies we know do have pretty free cash flow generation, has been capital discipline, and so you want to focus on those. But be selective in energy where we are neutral, but doesn't mean that you shouldn't have any exposure.